Hi friends, welcome to my channel Enduro Fit Media. I'm Joby Paul, an endurance athlete, and I'm a three times Ironman. Today, I'm going to talk about how I set up my bike for a full distance or a half distance Ironman race. The major components of my bike, the spares and accessories, the extra spares and accessories I keep for the race, and the nutrition and the hydration um, storage on my bike. Please subscribe my channel and uh, hit the like button if you like this video. In a triathlon, we have swim, bike and run. In swim and run, we mostly depend on our body and our skill. But in the bike luck, apart from, the, from our body and skill, we trust and depend on a machine too. It is, it is nothing but our bike. And in a triathlon, major time we spend on our bike uh, throughout the race. So it's very important for us to uh, set up the bike properly before we check in the bike for the race. So this video is all about my bike setup for a full distance or a half distance Ironman race. Before I start, uh, please note that these are the things that works well for me. This may not be the case for everyone and uh, every bike. So please listen carefully why I use this or why I uh, do this uh, specifically. And uh, of course, please take it very logically. Uh, my bike is a 2017 uh, felt IA16, uh, but we cannot say uh, it is a fully I an IA16 model uh, because except the frame, uh, everything is customized by myself. So the frame is, uh, yes, a felt IA16, a full carbon triathlon specific bike. Uh, in fact, uh, felt has won many Iron uh, Ironman World Tri uh, Championship uh, in uh, Kona. Uh, mine is a medium size frame, uh, it fits uh, properly for me and uh, very comfortable for my size. The wheels I use uh, is SIP uh, Firecrest 808 uh, deep section wheels uh, for the rear and uh, Firecrest 8303 for the front. Uh, initially I bought um, an 808 deep wheel for the front too. Uh, but it was very difficult for me to control the bike during heavy crosswind so I changed to 303. Uh, basically, I am not very good in bike control, especially in downhills and uh, crosswinds. Zip wheels are quite expensive, but the quality and the performance is too good. Uh, in this wheel, uh, the brake track is also carbon, um, so we have to use specific carbon brake parts. Uh, uh, during my training, I mostly use uh, alloy wheels and uh, for race, I change uh, to this carbon wheel set. So I have to change the brake parts also uh, when I change the wheels. Also, uh, as these wheels are uh, quite deep, uh, we have uh, we need to use a tube with extra long wall, which is mostly very difficult to get. Uh, it's very rare, so we have to use a valve extender. Uh, I also have a low cost AliExpress Chinese carbon wheel set uh, for my training. Um, these wheels cost just 10 percentage of the SIP wheels, but uh, I only use these for uh, local training. Tires I use are uh, Continental Grand Prix uh, Four Season 25mm clincher tires. Um, actually, I'm a big fan of these tires. These tires are made with a specific carbon compound uh, for wet weather grip and uh, great uh, contact during cornering. Uh, this tire has a Vectran layer, uh, and the manufacturers claim that uh, it is five times stronger than steel, and uh, so it can directly block a nail uh, that can cause a puncture. I don't know whether it is true or not. Uh, but however, uh, for me, this tire never gave me a puncture uh, yet. Uh, thank God for that. I did uh, many training rides, three full distance Ironman and one 70.3 with this tire. But on my first Ironman 70.3, I used a different uh, tire and I got a puncture and a bad crash due to that puncture. Now you can imagine why I'm a big fan of this tire. I recommend this tire to many riders too. Uh, my friend uh, Felix recently finished uh, Paris Press Paris 1200 km ride successfully with uh, these tires. So without any doubt you can go up for this tire if you are fed up with the puncture or uh, grip issues. But uh, of course it is not a super fast tire. Uh, 
also i prefer 25 mm uh, tire over 23 mm uh, you can ride with a lower uh, pressure and also for cornering in downhills and all uh, you get better uh, ground control with the 25 mm tire group set uh, i use uh, is shimano altigra da2 da2 means uh, it is electronic shifting the gear shifting is uh, done with the motorized electromechanical system so of course uh, there will be a battery uh, there is a lithium ion battery inside the seat post and you need to recharge it battery back time uh, depend on the number of times you shift the gear usually you will get uh, 500 to 800 kilometers in a single charge the major advantage of uh, electronic gear shifting are um, basically shifting is very smooth and the shifters are very soft because it's just a switch uh, you can you can shift the gear just like a mouse click uh, this is a big advantage when you race in cold weather uh, because in cold weather your fingers may uh, may be partially numb uh, after a long ride and with the da2 setup you can shift very easily another advantage is that uh, with the da2 you can have uh, multiple shift uh, switches uh, for the same gear uh, in my bike i have uh, switches uh, on my base bar as well as my tt bar end which control the same gear only thing is that uh, we should make sure uh, to recharge the battery before big race uh, because if the battery is exhausted you need to ride the rest of the distance with the single gear Instead of using felt handlebar setup, I have a customized handlebar system. I use uh, Profile Design SW0 full carbon uh, base bar and uh, Profile Design 35C carbon aero bar extension. I have uh, DA2 gear shifters at uh, base bar as well as uh, aero bar extension. You will be more aerodynamic in this Profile Design setup uh, than a uh, felt uh, handlebar setup. Uh, also I have the Exlab Torpedo handlebar hydration setup which is also very aerodynamic. Exlab hydration setup has the bike computer mount also. So I can keep my Garmin Edge 25 here. Uh, for me this is the best place to keep my uh, bike computer as I can see my riding parameters all the time without much effort. Perfect. In a triathlon bike lock, uh, in the aid station there are a lot of uh, fueling options available like uh, eating uh, things like uh, banana, orange, different fruits, uh, then energy bars, uh, then we have different kind of uh, drinks like uh, energy drinks, get right, uh, coca-cola, a lot of things available. But mostly I use uh, liquid uh, nutrition uh, for my uh, bike lock. Uh, during an Ironman event because uh, in my experience if I eat a lot uh, during the triathlon um, bike leg I will have a stomach upset during my run leg so I mostly prefer to have uh, liquid nutrition plus a couple of uh, energy gels so I have my own uh, preparation of uh, energy drink uh, with a mix of uh, carbohydrates amino acid uh, plus salt so it is very important for me to have proper hydration sto uh, storage strategy in my bike i have uh, one handlebar uh, bottle here um, plus two bottles behind my saddle here uh, i don't have any bottle on the down tube uh, or c tube uh, you can see that the down tube and c tube uh, of the bike as you can see a very deep and is designed to get aerodynamic advantage but if you keep bottles and bottle cages uh, here uh, you won't get that advantage completely this is a case for uh, other bikes also mm -hmm. always better not keep bottles on the down tube or uh, c tube uh, coming to my hydration mix uh, i keep uh, this hydration mix with uh, normal concentration on my handlebar bottle and the right side saddle bottle on the left side saddle bottle i have the same mix with the 3x concentration so once the handlebar bottle becomes empty I can take one third uh, from my 3x bottle and uh, take water from aid station to get another full bottle uh, of my drink. So in effect with these three bottles I can have five full bottles of my hydration drink and uh, it is pretty enough for me for a 180 km ride. Now for uh, 
energy gel storage we have an integrated storage space here which is designed to give minimum damage to the aerodynamics of this bike it's very deep also i can keep some bike tools and a few energy gels in this also i have a storage box behind the saddle this also comes with a felt bike a very aerodynamic box as, as you can see this i keep extra tubes uh, co2 inflator tool uh, etc in this box uh, then co2 ca uh, cartridges can be kept on the saddle hydration setup two co2 uh, cylinders can be kept like this I use uh, power top uh, P1 uh, power meter pedals. Uh, this can be paired with my Garmin watch and uh, cycle computer to see the power, average, lap power, etc. We need to use uh, AAA battery in both pedals. It's very important to keep the bike uh, serviced before the race. Uh, it's always better to give uh, the bike to your service center before packing the bike for the race. Because uh, we might have done long training for, uh, for many months uh, with the same bike, uh, so it's better to service the bike by an expert before the race. We need to clean the chain, uh, hub, cassette, uh, then uh, loop the chain, uh, we have to loop the brake cables, gear cables uh, and we need to check all screws uh, whether they are intact or not. And uh, this will give less headache uh, for the race. Always remember that a clean bike is a fast bike. So that's all about my bike setup before the race. Uh, thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions, please uh, write it on the comment section. Please hit the like button and uh, subscribe my channel. Thank you very much.